Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday, even though we're filming this on Monday. Yes, filming schedules are sometimes not the day we actually release the video. <laughs> um, and we've got Liz here from the Liz Olive Show and Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. And <laughs> next week, the 28th of March, which is Monday coming up, is Liz's birthday. So we can kind of do some pre-celebrating <laughs> on it's your golden birthday too, right? You'll be 28 on yep. the Yep. <laughs> I've always looked forward to this birthday, so I don't know why, but I'm very excited. And make it I was four when I had mine, so I don't I don't quite remember that birthday. But <laughs> yeah. but next year I'll be 40, so maybe the fourth for hey, forty I can do something. Yeah, double <laughs> open doors. Know so how old we are, seeing that um our dates and calendars are off. Do we really know our real age? I mean, I know my soul's real old. <laughs> my soul's like a cranky old lady, so <laughs> I know she's been around for yeah. a while. So um I feel that. <laughs> so but before we go get into our show today, I just want to remind you guys, of course, let's see here. Let's go over and look at their channel. So, of course, if you guys have not followed Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, go ahead and give her a subscribe. I will also be putting a link to her tarot card business down in the description box below if you want to book a private session with Stephanie. Um, and let me, uh, crap, let me pull. I'm so Sometimes I'm really bad at being a host. Let's see. Here's Liz, the Liz Olive Show. Go ahead and get Liz a subscribe. As you guys know, Liz is our tip TikTok queen. I'm actually going to be covering a couple of TikTokers tomorrow or when this airs, it will have been yesterday on David Zublik's show. Um, and so I'm having to like research more about TikTok because my old ass is like, what is this again? Um, but Liz made her face <laughs> on TikTok and now she's moved over to YouTube. And also I have one of Liz's shirts on. I always pretty much always have one of Liz's shirts on. So does Stephanie. So guys, please go over and check out Liz's shop over on Etsy. I'm going to be again putting this link down in the description box below of course you can also click the link on youtube my computer is being a little bit slow pulling up all the the images here but are we still doing liz 15 percent off for the word passion for viewers yep yep 15 percent off and i believe you're going to be coming back on with Catherine and me soon too right to talk more about your store too right yeah yeah we're trying to figure out a date but yeah <laughs> definitely you guys both you and Catherine have been and now stephanie great supporters of my shop so i really appreciate it it's 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 been such a nice way to get into oh, starting a business and having such good support behind me so i really appreciate it your shop's fucking awesome like i love all your shirts like, and so, i want every single shirt i know they're <laughs> so um classy you know like they all have messages but they're not like in your, over in your face messages like they're really yeah. spiritually based too, which is something that we know this war is really the spiritual war, right? Yeah. So they propose, I mean, yeah. Stephanie, you've got uh, born for such a time as this shirt on, which I have that sweatshirt. I love it. It's like my favorite mm -hmm. it's the softest. My sweatshirt. next is going to be the Charlie Ward. It's pantomime. Yep. I yep. need that shirt. I just, yeah. can't nice. I literally, <laughs> so I started back a years ago, I started cutting t-shirts when I was a Mysore teacher. And this might be a little yeah. TMI, but welcome to the channel. Um, and I, I've got boobs. Like I'm a girl that has boobs, even though I'm quite small framed, I have boobs. And so when I would wear the tight uh, yoga tops, I always would feel really uncomfortable, like adjusting men sometimes because you use your body. So, and I would, you know, it'd be tight and just be like boobs on a back. And so I started cutting t-shirts um, to give me more space to, to teach. When I practice, I just practice in a sports bra. But then I started wearing these shirts on. I love them. They're so comfortable. And so I've cut this one. It comes in an actual t-shirt on Liz's shop. But now she's making tank tops. And I have two of the tank. Steph, are you in the tank top? Yeah. So now you're actually making tank tops, which is freaking awesome, especially. And I was telling Liz, I think I told you, my last course that I taught, somebody in the course showed up with one of your tank tops on it was oh, yeah i've had quite a few people i've had quite a few people from georgia um mention that they have gone to your um one of your classes or whatever and and they're like oh i know guys like that you know it's just super cool how connected everything is yeah yeah it's funny um our shala here in atlanta we're one of the few that's not requiring the we'll just say the paperwork 
um, to come in and we're getting so freaking busy because apparently people don't like to show paperwork. <laughs> so yeah. don't mean right. that. imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> apparently they, they kind of like the that it's just a normal shala. No questions asked about any of that. Yeah. So, um, and so of course, yes, I am always, I mean, I'm only there once a week teaching my courses. I don't teach, um, daily there anymore, but I hear that a lot of people are coming in through the channel that live in Atlanta that had lost, some people had lost their place of, of practice. And so um, they found Ashtanga Yoga Atlanta through my channel. And I am eternally grateful. We are just one big family. And this is a spiritual battle. Part of a spiritual um, uh, awareness is being able to see the truth through the illusion. And at a micro level, that is knowing how to see the truth of your soul through the illusion of the ego. But in a macro level, that's able to see the truth of your reality around you. And I think a lot of people in this great awakening have, have realized that the world is an illusion and everything's an illusion. And so it helps to have that community of people around you that are also seeing the having the same perspective that you have. And so for those in Atlanta who have been coming to the Shala, even though I'm not there except for once a week, um, I know that is greatly appreciated. And just know that the person you're practicing beside most likely has the same thought process that you do. So that that makes you feel safe and comfortable. So anyway, are y'all ready to get so started? So we're going to do some tarot readings and I'm going to start off with a personal question for myself, because as Mark Atwood said on our show with Catherine, this is just me giving a middle finger up to those that have been basically trying to make my life hell for the past three and a half months, which I find kind of funny now because I'm still standing. Um, Stephanie, let's ask the cards. Has my phone, has spell work been done on my communication devices so that I don't receive certain messages, phone, text messages? <laughs> Yeah, emails. Now, Stephanie knows last time we were filming um, a few days ago, I got this very strange text message from a number I didn't recognize. And it had to do with like a property here in Atlanta, but it was very weird. And we kind of kind of sat with it on a while for a while. We were chatting and I decided to respond and just very basic response. And after I made that response, all of a sudden, all the apps on my phone started going crazy. Even my app that keeps track of my period went a little crazy. And I was like, y'all, y'all went, oh, y'all went, you go, go, go big or go, go home, right? Like you guys are a little overboard with this. I had to turn my phone off for a while. And I know um, Janine from Turn the Page by Janine had texted me. I saw the text pop up on my screen. And then when I went to open my phone, it was gone. Um, I know a lot of people are telling me they're texting me, they're WhatsApping me, they're signaling me. And I'm not getting the messages. I get that with emails too. And that this all started um, around the time that all the spell casting started. And also too, I just wanted to point out too, um, I'm not getting some emails. I know there's a couple people that um, have reached out to me um, or if you have reached out to me, if you're like another truther or somebody else and you've reached out to me and I haven't gotten to you like, I was caught up to my emails as of two days ago. So if I've re I haven't responded in the last couple of days, uh, cause I know some spell work was done on my email specifically. So, um, I just want to say I'm not ignoring you and I've answered everybody's emails as of, like I said, two days ago. Um, yeah, there has been spell work. Um, I have the magician card. That's an indicator of spell work. Um, and it's, because you are a lion. There's there's something about the Lyran essence that uh, they're going after. I won't go too much into that. Okay, but that's what I'm getting with the strength card. Um, so it, it's like, um, it's funny because I have every single element here. And I think that even the negative spell castings, they use a lot of the elements as well to do the negative spell casting. Oh, yeah. So yeah, there's, this is like a struggle. Um, they want you to struggle. This is like scrambling things. Um, it's not just, it's not more, it's, it's more than one person working oh, yeah. together. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. And then this was uh, a communication of words. So yeah, they, they might, you know, I don't know if it was the text message itself or if the text message triggered somebody um, to do these spell castings. Um, how do I word this correctly without going into too much detail from what I intuitively know? Um, I think somebody's really pissed. Yeah. So yeah, my somebody phone, was trying to reach out. 
yeah. So there's um, been a cutoff of communication um, for the past three and a half months. And like I said, and I've said this on my show multiple times, I'd suspected that that's what happened. And when I first started suspecting it, I actually went online and just researched. I said, research spells to stop people from communicating with each other just to see, because I've never done this before. And I was like, holy shit, there's literal, like you can go on Reddit and find just threads of all these spells you can cast to stop people, certain people from communicating or groups of people from communicating. This stuff is really, really real. And I kind of laugh about it now. I mean, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating when people are like, Hey, I sent you a text and Mark Atwood tried to text me and I got his text and I responded to him. But then we were emailing saying he never got it. And I was like, Oh, that's because there was some magic done on my communication devices. My zoom has been screwing up. My email has been screwing up. Um, but it can't last forever. And it kind of goes back to that whole consent thing. You can't, if you break the law, just because it's a law, free will is a law, doesn't mean it can't be broken. If you break the law of free will and you fuck with people this way without their consent, I'm not so concerned about the, um, the justice on this realm. I would be more worried about the justice on the next realm. That's when shit's going to get real. And if you are the type of person where you feel like you have to do that, stop people from communicating, then you really need to sit with yourself because that's your issue. That's an issue you have because I'm, regardless of what you throw at me, I'm fine. I just keep getting better and better and better and stronger and stronger and stronger. And so jokes on you. Yeah. My phone's going to be screwed up for a while. I even mentioned to Stephanie that I might change my number just to see if that helps. But then I decided, no, I'm not going to change my number because all the people I love in this world, including these two ladies have that phone number. And so I'm just going to ride this out and wait for, for this to to stop because it's going to have to eventually stop. We can't go into the new timeline with this shit still going on. So it's going to eventually stop and I'm just going to ride it out. So, um, so yeah, middle finger to you guys. All right. Can I ask one more question regarding spellcasting? Has there been spell work done on my YouTube channel to massively shadow ban me? Because I don't think YouTube is the one shadow banning right now. The number we know the answer to that, but yeah. let's just in the cards. Let's do the cards. I noticed back. your views. Yeah. Your views are way down. Yeah. Way down. And you um, and so Catherine. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Well, Catherine and <laughs> I are connected to it's all coming from the same place. Yeah. yeah. And that for me that, and I never really pay attention to views and stuff like that. Like before I never really cared, but it, it affects my income. It affects the income off of AdSense. And I know that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to ooh, ooh. listen, if we're going to get a spread that's, that catches them red handed, boy, did we got it. I'm sorry, you reptiles, but I caught you. Okay. I know I'm being a smart ass right now, but this kind of stuff just, uh, yeah, I can't wait until they meet their maker. That'll be great. Okay. So again, it's um, magic of communication. YouTube is also communication through the words, you know, words and thoughts. So we had the magician card. Again, that's magic. But look at this. It's it's temporary to those who are messing with Bryce. It's temporary. Sorry, I'm getting a little smart assy right now, so don't mind me. Because I'm very protective of my friend Bryce here. Very protective. And um, I don't like my friends being messed with. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Five of Pentacles is a very temporary yet painful position to be in. So, it's painful for you because it's taking away from your AdSense and all that kind of stuff. And you that work works. so hard on your channel. Um, I don't work nearly as hard on my channel. I'm doing other things, obviously, groups and stuff. But you put in, like, what, 60 hours? Uh, not, I'm sorry. You put, what, how many hours a day? Um, every day I work between 12 and 16 hours between filming, editing, and researching every day. Okay. Usually on the weekends, too. Okay. So this is your full-time job. And this is theft. You know, they're they're stealing. But it's but for those who are casting the spells, we know they watch Bryce. I'm just going to say how it is. Yeah, it's temporary. It's not going to hold. And um, your secrets are going to come out. And um, I'm, I'm just going to fully say this. They're, they're, they're doing this because they're hanging on to third density because they know they're gone. So once we ascend, um, but guess what happens? God comes in, steps in and bye bye. Now I have a question too. Now the, I know Stephanie, you know, you know, this and Liz, I don't think I've told you this and maybe this is saying too much, but at this point, 
I'm going to be completely transparent. Every time I post a video, I lose $200. I don't make money. I lose money, which should not happen. Um, so How does that happen? So this is that question. I think this is part of the spell casting. Is, my, is the money from the ad sets getting skimmed into another account, pushed into another? Is it their literal theft happening? Mm -hmm. Siphoning out what yes, is I yours. Think, yeah, yeah. Because I literally, okay. every, every time I post a video, it doesn't matter who's on it, doesn't matter, I drop like $200. Wow. So it was like money I, I would make from the AdSense goes somewhere. And I don't know where it goes, into the ether. I don't know. And, um, and I'm not going to stop posting to those because this is, even though YouTube is my main full-time job now and the AdSense really helps because I do work 12 to 16 hours and it's a way to get, to get supported to do this research and this work, I still have other means of income. And even though you've caused me a little bit of a discomfort, I'm still okay. Like I'm still okay. You don't know my whole life. You don't know. I still have support. And you can't touch that because that support isn't always coming through my own business, if that makes sense. So that's kind of pathetic. And I think if it is that, there will be a reckoning. There will be some sort. There has to be a balance made. So it's just interesting. It drops two hundred dollars every time. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, so I kind of look at it in a lighter kind of way. Like you know, <laughs> you're you're learning it in a way. Like it's kind of leveling you up in a, yeah. in a way. You know, all that they're doing. <laughs> you I'll write a book one day. I'll be like, y'all. <laughs> when everything is out and I can say everything, I'm gonna start from the beginning. I'm gonna be like, this is the crazy. This is like a Stephen King novel for real. Like for real, Stephen King novel. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know what? I'm still laughing. I'm still smiling. I have so much love around me. I've always said that I have actual friends that I don't have to manipulate to be my friend. Like that's pretty pathetic when you have to do that. So again, it spells it right out. So someone with power, someone of high power, I'm going to go uh, high level, which warlock power is absolutely stealing uh, money because the pentacles are money. Um, and um, look at this. Going from one to the other. I don't normally get that with the two of cups, but that's what I'm intuitively getting. Yeah. It's, it's going from you. And then, you. you got that the two of cups and it's $200 and an twos are episode, yeah. vision. Well, it tells us an action card. So it's like they're taking action, which is a spell hey, word. Steal, to steal my, my, the, what I've earned. But, um, but it gets good, Bryce. It gets good. Sorry. I'm excited because I just... This is going public, so I just need to spew out my words here because this is, you know, pisses me off that they're doing this to you. Um, it's temporary. Again, temporary yet painful. It will end. <gasps> and this is a major arcana change. It's a tower moment. I'm getting so smart assy here in the moon cards. So it's like we don't know when, where, how, but I feel like this is also saying... The spirit realm has full control over this and is allowing it to play itself out so they can dig themselves a big break. That's what God keeps telling me. God keeps telling me, um, I'm allowing this to happen because you can handle it and it needs to be exposed. So don't, just because, you know, what's done in the dark will be brought to the light. And just because you're able to get away with shit now doesn't mean you're always going to be. It's going to be exposed. And how embarrassing is I that mean, to be? That you um, isn't that kind of like the story of Job? You know? Yeah. I also want to say, too, I I douse on the situation. I read on the situation. I've been reading the full situation. And to those who are stealing, just so you're aware, I believe there's white hats on your tail from what I'm picking I've up on told, military. I've gotten, yeah, I've been got I've gotten emails about that from people. I, I mean, the whole situation, I've people have constantly been reaching out to me. I've gotten multiple emails of people yeah. saying that the white hats are watching them. From November, when all of this shit went down, one of the first readings I got was there's going to be military repercussions. So I just want to put that out there for those who think they can mess with someone's uh, free will and um, communication and infiltrate, money and infiltrated this, the, is, this community. This is pure evil and yeah. um, pure evil. Can't, it what? can't stand going forward. What I don't think that the like dark side, like witchcrafty people 
realize or like think will actually happen is like physical ramifications of their spiritual acts. And that's, that's literally what's happening all over the world right now is like they, the, the dark evil people that we know of in the world, you know, they've done all of these dark evil spiritual acts and now there's actual physical ramifications of it. And, you know, sometimes I honestly think spiritual people think they're immune <laughs> and it's like, no, like they're like, I can handle like spiritual ramifications, but you know, physical stuff will happen. People are too asleep for that, but yeah, we're waking up. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, I like, this- go ahead. Sorry. What the devil makes for evil, God was always, always going to make for good. There's so much good that has come out of this situation. Um, so it's not to put anybody in fear. There's so much good out of this whole thing. That's why I'm Mm -hmm. not afraid guys. And I've gotten some of the worst attacks recently in my own home. I've been physically, I mean, it's gotten very physical at night and um, I'm not going to say exactly everything that's happened. Uh, Maybe one day I'll talk about it. It's, um, uh, last week there was a lot of blood involved. Um, and it was, Mm -hmm. and I'm just very, very, but, but regardless of what happens, the stealing of my money, the, um, the, the spell work done on my telephone, on my text messages and in my email, like despite all of the, the fact that my natal chart was stolen and was used and they had to steal my natal chart because they're dark souls. So how else are they going to fool people, you know, and our yeah. spell cast people, um, despite it all these last three and a half months have been some of the most eye opening months for me because it forced me to figure things out. It forced me to figure out who I am, why they're, why they're doing this to me. And it's only made me grow stronger and it's only made me grow brighter. And I feel I'm, I'm so happy, even though this is happening, I'm so happy in my life. I'm so I'm surrounded by so much love. And that's something that mm-hmm. these people don't have, obviously. Yep. I'm, I've got the sun like, and I know, I know my, per- I know this is part of my soul contract because I'm strong enough to take this. You're not breaking me. You're making me stronger. You're making me, st- you think you can break me? Listen, listen, I've spent years in, in India, have my legs ripped behind my head. You can't break me. I, last time I was in India, I got so sick. We were ra- rescuing dogs and um, we were pulling them out of the gutter. And for some, somehow, well, I don't know, some, this happens sometimes in India, human feces got in my system and I had never been that sick before. I thought it was literally going to die and I defeated that. So you got nothing. You've got, no- you don't know who you're messing with. I'm strong. I'm brave. And I can do a whole lot more than you think I can. And so jokes on you. You can have my measly little AdSense right now because pretty soon where you're going, no one's going to want to go. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the spiritual identity theft. You can try to steal my essence from my soul chart, but you can't steal my soul. And that's my chart, not yours. It's mine. And I know the people that are involved with you that have gotten themselves involved with you that are good people. I know they're going to figure it out and they're gonna, if they haven't already. And they're going to get themselves untangled from this, this web of deceit, manipulation, and lies that you have spun around them. So I, also wanna, I, I don't know. Um, I, I feel like intuitively I need to talk about this too really quick. It's tentacles are not just in one part of the truth or movement either. There's tentacles and bits and pieces of other um, aspects of the truthers and everything like that. And, um, I I just kind of wanted to, uh, quickly say that, um, just be careful. Um, if something doesn't feel right, um, disregard it, just stay away. Um, and, um, there's a lot of manipulation with, um, certain things that are being said, um, certain, how do I put this Bryce? I don't know how, trying to say this in a discreet way here. I would just ask people to not to really check yourselves. If you're, um, if you're starting to behave in a cult like manner, when it comes to certain, um, people on these platforms, like don't lionize other people don't lionize any of us on the screen right now. We are just like you. We are just human beings like you were, I mean, I've said this on my channel before, like I started a channel just so I'd have a place to present research so I could hear your feedback too. 
right? Because I'm a nerd and I like to research. You know, I mean it when I, the Ram Dass quote, we are all walking each other home. We are all hand in hand together in this. Do not lie. You can respect people, but don't lionize them. Don't put, don't put somebody else's opinion above your own to the point where you stop critically thinking. Because this is what happened to get us in this position to begin with, with the dark side. And so if you're starting to treat another truther, like they're a guru or they're God or what they say is the absolute truth, then you need to sit back. Even for me, even things I say, you need to practice critical thinking skills and realize that no human being needs to be lionized. You can respect people, but don't worship them. Don't hero worship another human being. It's not cool. It's not cute. And if you find yourself doing that, ask yourself why, and then start to unravel any type of manipulation that's been done to your head as well. Because we do know, we do know that with this bunch, this coven, they use YouTube, especially live shows, not pre-recorded like we're doing now, but live shows to spellcast. We know they click their nails. We've learned a lot. They click their nails to spellcast. Yeah, hair flipping. Hair flipping. Hair flipping. We spell cat. Now I move my hair a lot, but specific hair, specific colors that are worn. We know some of this coven is involved in spirit cooking because they've signaled it on a live show before on some using else. codes and in other didn't know that in other yeah. tent Bad. other tentacles yeah. of this coven or side covens um use certain codes to think uh make you think that certain things are uh real when they're not I, i'm not gonna go further into that use your own judgment on what i'm just what i just said codes let's just say i'm gonna say this again this is not a movie <laughs> this is not a movie no mm -hmm. when people tell you it's a movie that's getting to you to relax and rest into your laurels because this is a spiritual mm -hmm. battle the devil ain't stupid Evil isn't stupid. It's going to infiltrate our community and it's going to infiltrate through a spiritual level. Okay. And when, and when you believe it's a movie, it detaches you from anything they're doing because I mean, <laughs> like, you know, it's not real. It's like, you know, you might be feeling certain things or certain things might be happening to you. And then you're hearing it's a movie, it's a movie. And so you're like, Oh, that's not part of it. That's totally different, but it's all connected. Yeah. And we're not going to say names right now, guys. We can't, we can't, this is, a, this is, again, it's not a movie. We can't say names. This is a battle. This is real. People are really getting hurt. People are I'm glad really you brought that up. Grace. Do what? There's a lot. I'm glad you brought that up. There's a lot of, I go through the comments too, even on your channel, Grace, because, and, and I get really angry because I, well, I don't allow myself to get too, too angry because I, I don't want to go into that, that vibe. But, um, what I also want to say too is be very, very mindful what you are commenting on because um, we're going into a world that's completely different dimensional thinking and spiritually and everything like that, Christ consciousness, right? So what I want to say is do not, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, heal, uh, sh uh, victim shame, Bryce. I just want to put that out there. Do not victim shame because she has a right to talk about this. This is her channel. If you don't like it or, you know, it's offending you or you're upset that we're not divulging the name, then that means you need to work on yourself a little bit. They've literally tried to kill me. I mean, Stephanie knows everything I've been through. And last, last week there was a night that I, if something hadn't have happened, I don't know if I would have survived it. And so this is serious. This is very serious. And I'm not, um, I'm not going to say names because that puts me in danger. It puts me in, in even more danger. This is not a gossip channel. We're not here to, and I think most people want to know a name because they want to gossip. They want to know the gossip. This is serious. And I only bring this forward as well because I want to share my experience with you all so that if you're experiencing stuff like this too, you know, you're not alone, A. And B, that we talk about the severity of black magic, that it is real. You can't believe in angels and not understand that demons exist too. You can't believe in the light and not know that the darkness is also here too. It doesn't work that way. You don't get to pick and choose what exists and what doesn't. As my friend who um, also is, is, doesn't have a platform, but is a very a, much a light worker and she's seen everything. And she says, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't believe in black magic, black magic believes in you. 
And so I'm not going to name names. Again, this is a safety factor, not just for me, but with, for other people involved as well. And what I can do, you don't, but you, you don't need a name because if you actually listen to your gut, if something feels weird, if something feels off, it probably is. It doesn't mean if you feel something's off, you have to react right away, but you need to hold on to that and observe. Don't give yourself fully to a person you don't know. Even if you think you know them from a platform, you don't, don't give your, your soul to them. You know, don't be asking for readings on your children from these people because your children can't consent. That was concerning. I saw that as well. Your children mm-hmm. can't consent to having anything read on them. They're not old enough to. Don't do that. Okay? Like this, we, we need to understand the seriousness of this in order to move into the new world, in order to be able to move into a world where we respect free will, we pres- respect consent, and we respect boundaries. And this, I, I knew black magic existed before this. I mean, hello, Liz, we're from the deep south. We see this weird folklore stuff everywhere, don't we? Like, we know this is real. But this has taught me a whole new level of respecting boundaries, respecting consent, respecting free will, and understanding that people's trauma is not gossip. People's trauma is not tea. If you, there's, there are drama channels on YouTube. If you want to go watch them, there are drama channels that will do that kind of stuff, but they're very low vibrational. So we only bring this up because it needs to be brought up. It's not, this is not a fucking movie. This is a war and it's a war for your soul. And so you need to realize that the devil will play at anything to win that over. So just, just be very careful about who you're following, who you're watching Don't buy into it. Don't lionize. If you feel the need to start worshiping a human being, pull yourself back. Ask yourself why. Pay attention to the clicks. Pay attention to that, the colors. Pay attention to all that stuff. That's all spellcasting, my friends. All right. Shall we turn the ship around and have a little bit more fun? Because we're fun. We're fun, aren't we? We're fun. Ready to get kind of loose? I got loose. Girl, I've been ready to get kind of loose for a long time. (laughs) <laughs> she's like it up. okay let's go <laughs> as i said on my last video with stephanie ava and natalie i don't like romance novels but i like romance in the real life yeah so anyway all right so how we were talking before we hit record we talking about how, to, how to do this and levi's agreeing with me even though he's super young he's like he's, he thinks i'm funny he's laughing at me um, um all right <laughs> he is actually <laughs> <laughs> oh Levi, Auntie Bryce loves you so much. Look at that hey, child. Hi, hi, Levi. Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> Levi, I, I love just have the camera t-shirt. Dirt. I love your t-shirt. It's so cool. Hey, thank you. <laughs> oh, this man right. is oh, yeah. yogurt. <laughs> so we were talking about what to ask the cards and Liz and I were talking about how in the um, ancient scripture, it talks about how the uh, spring equinox, which we just had on Sunday is actually the start of the new year, um, which makes mm-hmm. sense in the nor- Northern hemisphere because it's going from the darkness of winter into the rebirth of spring, right? The rebirthing. Can we ask the cards then the cards either validate that for us or say, no, no, that's not right. Will the cards give us some indication of whether this is the new year? The start of the real new year. Okay. And Liz, you're looking very skinny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you. Maybe because I'm actually showing skin. <laughs> like I never actually show my skin. <laughs> Liz is gonna like show up next time with like a bathing suit on. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, well, I am going to the beach. So fun. <laughs> For my birthday. That's so yeah, fun. We're gonna take a little a little weekend vacation, long weekend for my birthday. Cause my my husband sucks at doing things for my birthday, so I think he's trying to make up for it now. <laughs> he literally I was like, we had some friends over and he was for his friend's birthday and I was like, Okay, so are you gonna plan this much for my birthday? Because it's really soon. And he's like, Uh yeah, uh let's Let's go somewhere. It's a surprise. <laughs> cool. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping okay. by my birthday next year, which is in February, will be my 40th. So I'm hoping you girls and everyone else in this community, we can go somewhere and party. 
That'd be so fun. Yeah. 40 is a big number in the Bible. Like that's the end of suffering, right? Oh God, if I have to wait till 40, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's a lot of astrological cards in this. Um, so obviously the Stark card is an astrological card. Um, and I feel like uh, the spring equinox, we're coming up on probably certain, um, what would you say, constellations or certain... I don't know my astrology very, very well at this point in time, but I feel like there's astrologically speaking, it is the ending of the year and going into a new year. Um, <laughs> I think the powers that be collaborated and um, brought an ending to that once upon a time um, very discreetly. So yeah, that was manipulated. Absolutely. But I feel like spirit saying um, it's, there's, this is a card of um, like spirituality change and, but it's like of the divine. So there's a divine plan behind it. I feel like we're going to go back to that is what I feel like this is saying, but yeah, I'm getting a yes. It's the new year. Sweet. <laughs> I've always felt like it was, but I was telling Bryce before we press um, record that I feel like everybody should just kind of like go on their personal new year, which is like your birthday. You know, yeah. that's the start of the new year for you. So it's kind of funny. I mean, I guess when you're trying to like make a system out of people, you've got to like have something for them to follow. It can't just all be sporadic, but at the same time, like I don't do new year's resolutions or anything like that. But like when my birthday comes around, I'm like, okay, this year is going to be the start of this. And it just so happens. My birthday is like a week after spring yeah. after the new year. So <laughs> I saw the most interesting thing on Facebook and who knows if, if it's true or not, um, because we don't know if any of our history is actually real. And it was this person talking about, they knew that a woman was the first human species with the, the two genders um, to keep, keep up with time because they found rocks with like 28 days marked. Oh, because of our cycles. They like track their cycle. That makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah. And I mean, doesn't our cycle, most people's cycle, most women's cycle follow the moon? Yeah. Yeah. Full moon. So they probably were attracted to both. They're like, hey, this kind of lines up. And then they went, went through a phase, apparently, where full mooners were burned to the stake, but whatever. That's happened to me so many times. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, once you have a baby, everything kind of gets off. <laughs> Everything kind of goes its own way. <laughs> <laughs> it goes its own way, head south. Yeah. Body kind head of south. like, yeah. Everything head south. A hundred percent. for the winter. <laughs> they all moved to Florida. Everything moves to Florida. <laughs> yes! Yes! I just got a shirt, guys. I just got a shirt. I still have my shirt. I, I ordered that shirt, shirt actually. Show. You did. Okay. Yeah. Guys, it's a wonderful shirt. It's a little tank top. I ordered. I found it on Amazon. I had to get it. It says DeSantis, make America Florida. And I'm like, <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's going to be my slogan. I mean, obviously, guys, yeah. I want my damn palm tree. Yeah. You know, we're going back to the palm tree. I saw another truth or had a palm tree picture. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, very jealous of that. So Liz is going to be seeing some palm trees this weekend, is she? I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Me and my husband, my husband's from a beach town. Like he grew up on the ocean. It's like paradise over there. Like it's a third world country, but it's still paradise because it's untouched and it's amazing. And so he, we both are like such beach people that most likely will live in Mozambique one day. But until that happens, <laughs> I just take, take me to the beach. Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Where are you guys going out? You going to Gulf Shores? No, Dolphin Island. It's oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Bye, Dolphy. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, so it's like attached, almost attached island. Yeah, you get a, you but get a ferry. I think you can get a ferry from Gulf Shores, I think Dolphin Island, all the way to New Orleans. If you because it's all the same. Oh, really? I didn't try it when I was there. I was like, I should just <laughs> breathe. But yeah, and there's apparently like awesome nature preserves on that island too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's very untouched. Like there's there's not many people there. It's really tiny. So it's like perfect. There's not like a bunch of spring breakers, you know. Yeah. Nothing like that. So yeah. And they actually have like 
white beaches, which yeah. is a big thing. My, my, my husband's a snob when it comes to beaches because he grew up in such a perfect place. So <laughs> finding a beach in America is a little difficult. You know, I was spoiled that way too. I'll give you guys a little, my little history. So my mom's family is from the coast of South Carolina. And so we used to spend our summers there and we always went to places that were like just locals. There was no like public beach. And so growing up and my mother was always very much a snob about the white, the white sand, like it had to be white mm -hmm. sand. And um, so I always grew up with in, on the beach with like nobody, it was like, it was just your little property. Like there was no one um, around. And so when I first went to a public beach, I was like, what, why are all these people here? <laughs> like, why are there people here? <laughs> so um, I, I was grew up at the beach too. And I don't know if you guys know anything about Connecticut beaches, but a uh, lots of shells and a lot of rocks on the beach. Mm -hmm. There's no perfect white sand. Actually, you might get a yeah. pad of purple or black sand in between all of that tan sand, but there's a lot of seaweed. There's a lot of rocks, a very rocky terrain and everything like that. So, it's but I know what you mean about the beaches. public beach at, be, in the, the private beach, because my grandmother had a beach cottage. She wasn't right on the water, but it was like a, it was private, but it, I mean, there's a lot of people there and everything. And then when you go to the public beaches, it's like, you can't even see the sand. It's just like umbrella after umbrella after umbrella. And it's just like obnoxious. I hate it. Liz, yeah. when you lived in LA, did you ever go to the beach in LA? I went. Like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Malibu. Well, Malibu is beautiful. Oh, man. But like Santa Monica, <laughs> I had to like cross a freeway just to get to the beach. And I was yeah. like, no. Yeah, no, Malibu is the place to go if you're actually going to take it. Because I lived in like North Hollywood, so it was far away. Um, but when we would venture to the beach, it would be Malibu for sure. <laughs> we would like pay the bougie parking and it was so much nicer anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, I and then there's like rocky Monica. sections. Yeah, there's rocky, beautiful, like sculpted out of the rock areas. And then there's like white sand. And of course, it's where all the rich people live. So, you know, <laughs> they're keeping nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't pick a very yeah. safe area. No, I, I lived in West Hollywood and then I worked in Santa Monica. So I was in Santa Monica a lot. But, okay. um, but yeah, I went like once and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> so yeah. Never went yeah. It does. It does. It's kind of oh, like spiritually overwhelming. It's like, I remember feeling like I needed to take salt baths as soon as I got home because I was just like, it's oh, it's so yeah. I liked Venice too. I mean, Venice is fun with the, you know, they've, there's a, you know, hopefully LA yeah. will get its charm back once it's everything's that's wrong has been righted. Now I have a question. Weirdly enough. So I was just going to remember, weirdly, weirdly enough, I went to the church in Venice. <laughs> I love that. Was I, I was down there. I, I really liked Venice, um, that part of LA. I really liked it. It's and, and there's yeah. just little boroughs all over LA, and it's such a big city, and there's so much traffic. You really don't venture out of your own little hubs. But I, whenever I was in Venice, I loved it. But speaking of the new world and the old world, I know I haven't covered Tartaria on my channel, but Tartaria basically, to make a long story short, was the thousand years of Christ reign spoken about in the book of Revelation. And so that was one of the most eye-opening things to me in my own research is that the apocalypse has already happened, um, in my opinion. The apocalypse was the fall of Atlantis. And now we are actually at the final battle uh, where that's where we ascend. And I think part of the uh, the club, we'll call it the club's uh, trickery, was to make us think that the year is 2022 and the, the fall of uh, the apocalypse hasn't happened yet and all that kind of stuff. So I want to ask the cards if Tartaria, the thousand years of peace, is real, if that really happened. And again, I haven't done a deep dive on this on my channel, guys. It would take a lot. There are so many. I'll, I'll see if I can find some good channels that cover this specifically and link them in the description box below because this is a huge, huge subject where people have literally dedicated their whole channels to Tartaria. Wow, that's incredible. And thanks to them, thanks to those researchers, how my opinion changed. So I appreciate their research and their hours spent looking into this. You have thoughts on Tartaria, Liz? I've never heard about it. <laughs> I've never heard about it. I'm just like, oh, this is a new well, one. Well, that's a truth bomb for her today. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting. Like you, when I first was, was introduced to Tartaria, I was like, no, this didn't happen. No. And the more you research, the more you realize you've been so freaking lied to about everything. You're like, oh yeah. Yeah. This probably happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's how when any new information is presented to me, I'm like, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. like, I mean, I kind of, I like hold it there until I start finding more truth about it. But I'm like, honestly, I'd believe anything at this point. <laughs> yeah. When at last time I filmed with Charlie Ward, uh, we were talking about everything that happened over the American continent that they don't want us to know. And Charlie said, he goes, it wouldn't shock me if they tell us Christopher Columbus sell from America and discovered Europe. And I was like, actually, that wouldn't shock me. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't sh- yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think okay. I remember listening to that. That would be funny. <laughs> it literally, like, nothing shocks me anymore. Nothing. Nothing. No. Somebody tagged me on Twitter, and I and they, they referenced our funny episode. I'm going to say, sorry, I, I don't remember the name, but I laughed so hard when I saw this. They showed the picture, you know, because we don't know what our Earth looks like at all. Like, we have no idea. And they showed it was, like, the earth, I have to be careful how to say this. The earth was like <laughs> in the shape of a male tripod, we'll say. A male palm tree. Oh my God. The male genitalia. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, it made me think of y'all, y'all's episodes. And I was like, take this one. Oh my God. And, like, and I was like, I laughed so hard. <laughs> I was like, actually, that wouldn't shock me either. <laughs> like, like, girl, girl, I have literally been trying. Trees. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I love palm trees too. That's the thing. Um, I've seriously been trying to come up with a shirt, a design that says <laughs> just for you, right? That says, you know, feed me grapes and tell me it's real. <laughs> I would buy that, Actually, by the way. I've been, I like, I've been working on it. <laughs> I would buy that. We also need to get I've a shirt list that it. says Ace of Cups on it. Ace of Cups. <laughs> bound to go wow, wow. <laughs> And then bound to go out. out, out. I mean, or the back. the Ace of Cups, the passion <laughs> is overflowing out of the cup. It's literally <laughs> overflowing. Like, why do they all that way? It's literally <laughs> What's overflowing, Bryce? What's overflowing? The baby gravy. <laughs> better. The baby gravy. Oh, it's, it's passion, right? Like, cups are emotions. It's passion. Oh, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know my science, like that doesn't happen unless there's passion, unless there's thought involved for that to happen. So guys, can I ask you something? Yes. What exactly were the dates of Tartaria that we know we of? We don't that? know. We have no idea. I think the middle ages is what we get. I'm getting it. It is that this is like a, everybody comes together and is happy, loving, wonderful. So again, that's like a thousand years of peace thing. Um, teaching so we know uh yashua and mary magdalene were teachers mm-hmm. um they're both the christ um as many people are people are not going to want to know that but that's the truth of it all um but i feel like it's like the middle ages with that um not a cups card i just don't know why i'm that's what i'm picking up on intuitively so maybe they made us think that that particular time period was like the dark ages because they twist it yeah a thousand years of peace was the dark ages I don't know. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm yeah. getting. I believe um, it. <laughs> it would make sense. Did the Crusades even happen? That's my next question. Did the military Crusades ever even happen? <laughs> well, we can ask that in just a second. So I- I'm getting that this was <laughs> stolen. Okay. So, um, okay. Where was I going with this? Okay. So, huh. <laughs> Guys, we literally know nothing. Like, we know nothing. <laughs> no, honestly, I just keep on hearing you say baby gravy. <laughs> baby gravy. I can't get it out of my head. But then he had okay, terrible. If I was younger and not speaking in his first word, was like baby gravy. That'd be kind of embarrassing. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would laugh my ass off so much. Auntie Bryce. Blame Auntie Bryce. <laughs> I'll say, okay, I'll tell you guys a funny story. My nephew was learning how to talk. I had picked him up. He was in his car seat. And I was, and I was pulling off the freeway from Marietta to get to my mother's house. She was living in Alpharetta. These are suburbs of Atlanta at the time. And you know, I'm an aunt. I don't have children around me all the time. And so I curse and I was pulling out on the freeway and I saw a car go by and I go, shit. And the whole time driving to Alpharetta, Charlie was in the back going, shit, 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 shit. And then we got to my mom's house. And he was going, shit, 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 shit. I was like, oh no, he learned that from his dad. I don't, I don't, sorry, Steven, I threw you on I was like, he learned that. Yeah. Learned that. Funny. 
Oh. Anyway. <laughs> He's like making techno out of it. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and all the words I've said, you remember that one. Like that's the one. Oh man, word, right? So he was. Yeah, the passion words. Yes, it's the one with the most intense frequency yes. behind it. <laughs> Listen, his dad's Italian. I'm sure he hears those words all the time. Now, oh yeah, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Stephanie. Okay. So I feel like the I feel like there was some nefarious people. We shall say powers that be. The higher font card is oftentimes my dark cult card or my um. You know, the powers that be card, right? Yeah. And card. um you see this little guy is paying off somebody, the money involvement, um, to uh spread the to to say that how do I put this? Because pentacles are physical. I almost feel like that's probably around the time like after that thousand year reign. I feel like that's maybe when the Bible was completely manipulated by Constantine. Yeah. Yeah, that's something mm-hmm. you too. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, oh, hold on. This might be Constantine. Son of a bitch. Was the release of Constantine the release <laughs> of Satan? You know, you know how like you have the so basically according to Revelation, whatever we know of Revelation is that you have the apocalypse where it's the fall of Atlantis. That was apocalypse. And then after that, you have the all that happens. And then you have the thousand years of peace where Christ comes back. When we say Christ, we mean the divine feminine and the divine masculine as in Magdalene and Yahshua come back and rule. And then after a thousand years, they have to leave to re-release these minions for a short time, which is a couple hundred years. And then there's a final battle where they have to leave and get off the planet completely, which is us ascending. So was Constantine, was he, was because Constantine kind of made himself a God, but now I'm thinking was Constantine like a representation of Satan? then i know it's kind of out there i don't know i'm just talking out loud i kind of i nothing shocks me me neither i don't and coming out of the church and guys when i say church i mean baptist pentecostal i'm talking deep church you did the rounds you did the whole basket i did the whole i did the whole box of chocolates yeah (laughs) okay I, I I tried the caramel. I tried the strawberry cream. I tried, oh, she froze. I tried the orange cream. I tried the fudge center. And no, I didn't like them. I didn't like any of it. It was like it was getting what is what is that brand of chocolates? They all suck. They all I don't like chocolate. Russell Stover. That's what it is. It's like any kind of Valentine's chocolate. Like yeah, exactly. Gross kind. You, you know the the way to my heart with food would be a bag of Skittles. Yeah. Noted. I, I like <laughs> your 40th okay. birthday. I'll 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 get I mean, name to fill your apartment with Skittles. <laughs> I mean, I literally like when I go to the gas station. I'm like, I gotta get some Skittles. Like I'm like a 12 year old. Like I can't go to the gas station. I get getting Skittles. That's that's I, what I like. I don't like candy. I like dark chocolate. I don't like that at all. <laughs> it's a lot of spiritual I mean, or chocolate. I'm like so sour. <laughs> really? It's higher vibrational. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And Starburst. I like Starburst too. You like Starburst? Really? I see it. it I, could, I could pass that stuff up. It doesn't really uh, do anything for me. Um, like- Summer Patch Kids, I can I can do. I, I like Raisinets, but again, they got to be the dark chocolate. Not, not the milk chocolate, the dark chocolate. I am. Um, there is this honey honeycomb dark chocolate that is divine. It's like six bucks a bar of chocolate, but it's worth so everybody. Good. Oh my gosh. I don't even like yes. chocolate ice cream or chocolate cake. I just don't like Girl. it. I don't like it. Like I'm not, <laughs> I never have been a chocolate fan ever, 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 ever. I don't yeah. think the cards are going to tell us the answers, Bryce. Whether, who Constantine was. Yeah. But I, I, I do get, he's probably not. He is probably a part of the bloodlines, which makes him. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm yeah. not getting, I'm not even getting he's human. Yeah. I got the star card and I got the moon card. Um, but yeah, we've been yeah, at the Christian church. Huh? There he's venerated in the Christian church as a saint. I know. Of course he is. Of course he is. Of course he, he can is. be reunited with Felicia, the patron saint of goodbye. Yes. Yes. Love that. <laughs> Bye. 
um, yeah, he I, he definitely came back to take over because I mean, look at that guy. It's like, but yeah, well, that kind of looks like the way. I mean, the whole story yeah. of Constantine and finding Jesus. Well, that one is named guys. They didn't even have the J sound. Yeah. Back. He, he came back and wanted to end the reign. He, I feel like he actually did end the thousand year peace reign. I think he was that 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 ending that took, you know, um, is, Tartaria is after before Atlantis, Bryce. After, because Atlantis was the apocalypse, the fall, and then Tartaria was the thousand years of peace. Okay. Something's messed up with that timeline, though. I feel like because the fall of Atlantis brought in the third density. But the twin flames. Yeah, I think from I'm you, I'll have to go back and look from what the Cassiopeians say because they they verify that Atlantis absolutely existed, like not myth, nothing. Like it oh no, I believe in it. I just yeah. it's it from what I, my the research that I did for um, Dark Outpost, I was saying how the I'll actually show everybody the book that I got here. This book, Twin Flames and the, the event that goes back into Atlantis and how um they the reptilians separated the uh twin flames which held up the frequency of earth to the fourth density positive and how when they were separated it lowered the density into the um third the third density um i'll have to look into that because i don't know if planets can go back and and according to the law of one i'll have to i'll have to look into that so this is my understanding atlantis existed and I know what we're experiencing now mirrors the karma of Atlantis. So we're going through a lot of the same, there's this battle of good versus evil. But with Atlantis, the final battle with that crushed Atlantis, the apocalypse was evil winning. But evil, like fourth density negative planets can't exist for that long. They ended up, they end up imploding because they're, it just can't work. And there was a huge flood. That's when the flood came in. And, and we know that Noah's Ark, is kind of a representation of that flood, right? And then, of course, we have the idea of the seven years of tribulation. All oh, there was, there was some heartache, there was some struggle, and then Joshua came back or came. I don't even think. I mean, I think he'd come before, but we know the crucifixion is bullshit. Like he was never crucified. That's a that's a satanic ritual that was changed. That's eating blood, drinking the earth. That's Mithra. It's Mithra. Mithra. And so the whole Christian story is Mithra. Yeah, it's, it's Mithra. Sorry, guys, I dropped my cards. Oh, you're okay. And so then after that happened, then Tartaria was here for the thousand years of peace. And then after the thousand years of peace ended, as it was prophesied to end, they released Satan and his minions from the, from the pits of hell, wherever that is, or wherever they were being held for a short time period, which, I mean, Giving the dates we have now, people are saying the end of the 1700s, beginning of the 1800s is when Satan was released, which is when the um, some of these families really started to take control, right? And so now we're at the final battle. Like this is the final showdown where that's Gog why- and Magog. Gog and Magog. So my question, my next question then, did the American Revolution really happen? <laughs> my goodness. History is oh going to get really interesting, really quick. <laughs> and then my next question is going to be: those of us who are Americans, did our ancestors actually immigrate here? Or are we from here? That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I mean, did, was Christopher Columbus from here? <laughs> did he find right? <laughs> right. Wait, what was the first question you... again? Did the American Revolution really happen? Okay. Didn't you like find out that like Rome or something was Never existed. Atlanta, Georgia? Well, uh, Atlantis, Atlantis, Atlantis. So Rome, the Rome, the Roman <laughs> architect we see that's Atlantean architect. The Roman Empire never existed. We're in the Roman Empire. Yeah, this is the fall yeah. of the Roman Empire. They tried to trick us. Yeah, so yeah. We believe something else. Yeah. I have heard and that. I'll like it never went away. It just morphed into what it is now. Before I pull any more cards, this is also very, you brought this up, Bryce, and I wholeheartedly agree with you. The church and the whole tribulation thing, the book of Revelation and all that kind of stuff, I real. so we were talking about it and we were discussing how, you know, we, we talk about manifesting and stuff like that. Is the, the powers that be wanted, that was using the members of the church to manifest to yeah, bring right. in the tribulation and all the doomsday stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, the church so, is deep in it. The church is deep Satanism. 
It's sorry for those who are offended it's at by the that. Top but... of, it's the top tippity top of the pyramid. It's deep Satanism. Doesn't mean that Christ is, doesn't mean that God is. It means the yeah. organization of the, if you think you're going to a Christian church, mm -mm. Mm, no, you're going to a satanic church. Taking that communion. That's what they did on that island. All those little islands that I can't say because YouTube will not be happy. They were doing communion just like you do in church. Somebody said to me once, and I can't remember who said this is people across the United States who think you're going to a church would be shocked to know what kind of rituals happen in that church at night. That most, most churches are used for rituals at night. And that's just some hard truths that people are going to have to, but then again, it takes, it takes it back to the lionization thing. Like that just shows you, you don't lionize an organization or a person or a group. Right. That's, I mean, all of this is literally happening because of that through generations of that. It's like passionately it's happening because we <laughs> lionized. Oh, Bryce. Of course okay. it was. I got my answer. Of course it was. All right. What's your answer? I don't think it was. I actually think it's a cover up yep. for the fall of Atlantis. Um, and the reason being is so. Then that I would feel be like American Revolution, the American Revolution back like over a thousand years ago then. To the fall it of could Atlantis. have. It's, it was the fall of the divine feminine. Was the fall of Atlantis or the fall I think of. So. Tartaria. That's that's when that's when the feminine was distorted. So it had been the fall of Tartaria after Atlantis that. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, and uh, it was more toward the masculine. And uh, yeah, it was a spiritual war. A spiritual war. It was not. It was the, it was the end of Tartaria. Yeah. Um, so uh, next question. Are those of us who are Americans, regardless of your race, <laughs> are we actually from here? Did our ancestors immigrate here? I, mean, I know some have because they're like grandma, grandpa immigrated here, but I'm talking about like the settlers. Are we actually like Atlantean and now we're from here? Because we know this was the base. This was like the headquarters, the main, the capital, if you will, of Atlantis. Not Africa, but America. Of course, they're not going to, they're going to think, like, if it existed, if they're going to put that out there, it's like, oh, it's folklore. But if it existed, it would have been over there. No, anywhere they point, just look in the direct opposite. <laughs> Mirror everything, right? Seriously. I pulled this three is, cards, and I, they might not make sense to any person who knows how to read tarot, but I was getting uh, audible downloads. This is where uh, priestesshood of Isis. Look at that. That's the key. Priestesshood of Isis. So that's Jesus or Yahshua. That's Mary Magdalene. That's Osiris and Isis. If you don't know what we're talking about, go and watch the uh, video we did with Cindy, right, Bryce? Um, but Genesis, the book of Genesis, is actually the genetics of Isis. Genetics of Isis. And then... They wanted to confuse you. So I'm getting that the, the question being, I'm going to pull more cards to clarify. I get yes and no. It really depends what lineage you're from. But I think that we're, a lot of our lineage, like I'm finding out my own lineage. I'm finding out it's not what I was told. Mm -hmm. On my dad's side of the family. Bryce, you know that. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. finding out who I am, what my lineage is, and boy, was that was, was mind blowing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Here. Yeah, they flipped it. Yeah. So this, when, so when Mr. T said America first, again, I don't think he was talking about just, you know, being a leader of the country. I think there was more to that statement to the American continent. Was Mary Magdalene, is her actual tomb, we, people think it's in the south of France, but I kind of laugh at that. Like, that's not, that's not her soul. Is her, is her burial in Ottawa, Canada? Was she buried in Ottawa, Canada? Mary Magdalene. Under a government building. With her family, the crypt. Because you know they do that shit, guys. You know they put government buildings on top of 
They don't just find a nice people piece of property and say, hey, let's put a courthouse here. No. I can't. What is Ten of, yeah. Ten of cups and death. She's up there. Are they let me, just, let me just clarify. Give me a sec. So there are only two cards. Not wild. Well, I think the real France is Canada. So I do too. I do too. Go back into yeah. Ottawa. I think that's Gaul. What they call Gaul is um is Canada. I knew God wanted me to get these cards for a reason. Why don't you take a close look at that, Bryce? The feminine, the chair, it's the chariot. So it was moved. They moved her. They moved, well, they didn't move her. They moved the story. I also want you to look at the colorings on that card. Gold and silver. Yeah. That's Lyran. Yeah. Lyran so, energy. So most likely, most likely, she's yeah, better. But they moved her. Canada. I think they moved her. But I don't think that that skull in, in, in France is hers because it's a Middle Eastern woman and we know she wasn't Middle Eastern. So now her. I'm getting. Hold on. I need to clarify a card here because I'm getting more to the story. Hold on. Because she's with her parents, right? Like it's a family crypt um, where she. Yeah, well, that's. Hold on. I dropped another card. <laughs> Spirit. Guys, I, I, I get excited. Okay. Don't hate. Well, I just split my deck and I got the hermit and the empress, which is interesting. Okay, yeah. She was by herself, I think, too, a lot. She went on the, on a mountain oftentimes. But when you said family, that's family. That's family. She so, said, her fa yeah, her family was very powerful. Again, I'm getting a hierophant paid somebody off to move her. You can't make this shit up. So fucked up. Like, I can't. Mm -hmm. Listen, I've seen too many horror movies about messing with graves, guys. Like, we don't mess with graves. I, My opinion, though, is I think she's still in Ottawa. And I think they put a government building on top of her and they're harnessing for the bad, that power. That's a little effed up. That's what well, they are, a little effed up, aren't they? <laughs> Just a smidge. Just a smidge. I mean, that's kind of minor compared to the other things they've done. So I feel like they're harnessing some sort of, like, essence from her remains even though that's not her anymore because she's passed but can we ask the cards this is the is yashua's body buried in the grand canyon let's ask that do you want me to pull two there's also a isis temple mm -hmm. in the grand canyon that they hit and it's the temple, right shiva is part of the trinity of the of uh Hinduism. Vishnu, Shiva, and Brahman. Oh, that there's a Shiva temple in there too. Yeah. Yep. How did that get there? Riddle me that, Batman. Can't make it. It's, it's guarded by the government. You can't get into these crypts. You can't get into these uh, tombs. So I think he actually is buried there, but I don't think he wanted to be buried there. I think he wanted to be buried with Mary Magdalene. I only pulled three cards. So um, four, of, four of cups, which is like a deal you don't want with the ace of wands, yeah. fourth card. So I think it's going to, I think once every, I think they're going to be moved. The bodies will be moved, but I think he didn't want to, I think he wanted to be with Magdalene. Of course he would. That's his twin flame. That's his wife. Of course you would want to be buried with your wife. Now the answer is why wasn't he able to be buried with her? Or the question is why why wasn't that possible? Okay, I'm getting an odd story here. Okay. So yeah, it's blocked. Can't get in. Five of Cups. Um, this could be a blessing in disguise. This could be Dark Knight of the Soul card, but I'm getting like he didn't want to, he, he, again, I was going back to what you said. It's not where he wanted to be buried. <laughs> um, in the future, we will find out the, the truth. truth and everything. Yep. Um, but I split the deck in half and guess what I got again? The same cards keep coming up. The higher font and the chariot. 
So God. maybe he was buried. Okay, I just had this download. Maybe he was buried with her. And they moved him. Separated because they separated the twin flames to, to yeah. bring down yeah. the vibrational frequency. Yeah. Ugh. I want the truth, man. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Liz, you have any questions? You want any, any, you're sitting, I see, I see your wheels turning as you walk around. You're like, holy shit, holy shit, holy well, shit. Well, I'm just learning so many new things right now. <laughs> I'm like, what? I didn't know about that. What? Just your Bible, just, just know, like, it, just whatever you're reading it, just flip it. The Bible is, for me. I mean, yeah, kind That's of anything that is like a narrative these days. I'm like, what is the opposite? What yeah. is the opposite of that? That's probably <laughs> what, <laughs> that's what I'm what's to. going on. <laughs> Quite literally. So when you say Jesus loves me, you mean Jesus as in Satan hates me and Yahshua is the one who loves me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's just, it's crazy because like, I just know so many people that this is so far, <laughs> so far past their even realm of understanding and what they could even accept it's just kind of like do we want the truth like all of it to come out so i feel like people are literally going to have heart attacks i mean like, this yeah. is what what, what the military back channel play <laughs> like the end won't be for everyone yeah like seriously i i mean i just know so many people that like even just with spiritual stuff they're like on the fence sense about even if spiritual stuff is real i'm like okay if you can't even <laughs> it's more real that, than, like it's their density it's more real yeah I'm, I'm like we are spiritual beings like that is what we are first then we have a soul and have a body and this, the <laughs> like, body is the shakti of the expression of the soul yeah and i'm just like i it's so it's getting so hard for me to relate to people that are like that and then, like, I have people that ask me questions and whatnot, and I'm just like, I don't even know where to start, like, because I don't know how to go back to, like, kindergarten when it comes to this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I was really there. Don't. Like, literally yeah. nothing we've been taught is real. Literally nothing. I know. I, like, I was telling someone that the other day. I was like, literally, all the world is a stage, and we are players in it. Yep. Yeah, like, that cool. is 100% it. And if you can think of it from that perspective, things will be a whole lot easier to understand. Like everything that we have seen, they are like 20, 30 steps ahead of us. Yeah. <laughs> like their technology is 20, 30 years, probably hundreds of years ahead of us, what they're actually allowing us to have right now. So like they're if you just even demons. start at the basis, what? They're demons. Like these people that rule yeah. are literal demons shape-shifting into humans. And they're not able to hold yeah. their safe that much longer. That's why they know so much is because they're demons. Yeah. You know? I mean, and they've had to know so much so that they can gain control. I yeah. mean, like the whole, like in the beginning, the whole like knowledge of the tree of good and evil type of thing. I you mean, know? you read the apocryphon books and it tells a very different story of the garden of Eden. <laughs> it's very interesting. It says that um, uh, the garden of Eden was actually a prison that Satan put mm. us in, and it was God that freed us by giving us wow. wrong. So who knows? Who knows? I'm yeah. just being, I'm not saying that's what I believe. I don't know what I believe about the Garden of yeah. Eden. But speaking of Garden of Eden, can I ask one question of the cards? Yes, and then I just I have one more question too that because I, I want to clarify this for some people out there. So if we can ask. Florida is Egypt, as is Georgia is Egypt. What's Mar-a-Lago? You need to be more specific with the questions with the cards. Is mar a <laughs> a portal? It does it hold some of the essence still of the magic of that time that was. I need to go to spirit for a second. Hold on. I want to make sure I just had a download. I want to make sure that I can actually pull cards on this right now. I, I got access to it okay. just because it's sensitive because of who lives there. I just want to respect that. I think it's highly protected. Um, I do think Florida, the whole state is, I just see the temperance card. There's just, I mean, Tamara said that there's just angels 
Oh yeah. Heavily, heavily protected. Heavily protected. Um, I just think there's something about Mar-a-Lago. Like why Mar-a-Lago? We know Ma, like Mark Atwood taught me. Thank you, Mark, for that. The MA, the Ma, like Magdalene, Ma, Mar-a-Lago, Ma, manuscript, mankind. That means first light, Ma. Oh, that's it too, guys. If you think, if you still think Magdalene is for Magdala, where she was from, LOL, cute. One from Magdala. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. I think we're going to get a heart cute. attacks today, Bryce. Like, <laughs> She's not from Magdala. <laughs> Bryce is like full in Aries mode right now. She's I just am. like not holding so back. Listen. When you find you've been lied to so much and that your parents actually paid for you to go to private schools to be lied to, you're like, oh, oh hell. girl, yes. Oh, hell, no. yes. <laughs> yes, I understand fully. <laughs> Okay. Oh, man. All right. Bryce, remind me off camera. I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> you just like made me think of it. So, okay. Remind I'm me. going by the picture on this one, by the way. Yeah, it's magical. Yeah. So, I'm actually picking up my, some of my cards are not making sense in this spread. So, but um, <coughs> I'm getting. Okay, so Knight of Wands. So, so Knights can actually be like travel or movement. So uh, it's it's it, if it is, it's a good one. It's not a bad one. Yeah. I wonder if like good off-worlders come through there. Or yeah, well, I don't, I'm going to clarify. I don't think any portals are good or bad. I think it's just who's using them. Because all portals are, are like doorways. Yeah, like when you're, like when I'm the conduit of my pendulum, it's a portal. Mm -hmm. So if I'm of the light, then I'm going to channel the light through the portal, right? Our and bodies are portals. Yeah. There's yeah. a bunch of holes. <laughs> a whole bunch. <laughs> wow, Liz. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not going to take it that way, but I didn't fully mean it that way. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, <laughs> you did. <laughs> What'd you say? I just said, because there's a bunch of holes. <laughs> We're a portal and there's bunch a bunch of holes for that ace of cups. I meant like, I like knew it would kind of get taken that way, but I meant like your skin is like porous, you know, your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> your taco. Uh, your taco too. <laughs> oh, my God, Bryce. There's a reason like, it creates babies. The baby comes out. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> you say are just like the best things in the world like seriously Bryce you honestly make my day sometimes just with your like perversion Bryce, you need you need a t-shirt line of your own with just your sayings on it <laughs> like specifically from these conversations so if my sister's watching right now if you need me to talk to your kids about the birds and the bees I can do it I can do it in those bees. we use emojis I don't think she can promise it's going to be appropriate, but... I think that might, that might come out more confused. <laughs> I so mean, honestly, it'll get eggplant. worse in school, so... Apparently, I need an eggplant, and I need to go to Taco Bell, and then you get a... <laughs> so... <laughs> my mom, mom and Bryce said something about an Ace of Cups? Like... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh and God. they'll never be able to use tarot cards. <laughs> no. Because even in my regular readings, guys, like, no lie. If I get the Ace of Cups in my regular readings, I sometimes, like, randomly burst out laughing. I'm like, I'm really, really sorry. I hope you saw that episode because I can't look at this card ever the same again. Like, I'm having, like, a little kid immature moment. Oh I get, whenever God. I see the Nine of Cups, I get jo the John Travolta card. Like, I get Saturday Night Fever in my head. I'm like, seeing a lot. Staying alive. You know, it's immediately like that's just what comes in my head. I'm like, somebody's going to disco tonight. So <laughs> I don't know who. Someone's going to be going, it's the <gasps> card. Oh, man. So, oh, my God. Can I ask one more question to the cards? I know yeah. like we're almost at an hour and a half here, whatever we are at. I, I would, I want to clarify something. So there's a lot of talk about if Jesus is back or not. Can we ask if? Yahshua and Mary Magdalene are going to be reborn in the new world and they're not here yet. Yeah. Can we just clarify that? Because there's a lot of manipulation going on with that. I split the deck. It's not even even split. It just dropped in half. Lovers. And they're going to the disco. They're Sorry. totally going to the disco. <laughs> with an eggplant, a taco, and an ace of cups. 
I think all of these should just be rated R, just for viewer purposes. <laughs> These I are not for children. You can't use so care anymore. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> so true. When my, when we had the talk when I was a kid and my mother gave me the talk about where babies come from, I think I was still confused for a while because it was a Christian book. <laughs> and I remember yeah. the picture. It was just like a man and a woman kissing in the bed naked. So I don't think I actually understood where babies came from for a really long time. Maybe it was not until I actually took yeah. it to school that I actually was like, oh, oh. And right. I didn't have brothers. It was all girls. So I didn't know about men stuff. Yeah. Ever. I was, I was the same. The I literally my mom. <laughs> I literally thought that the man's part was shaped like a J. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why I'm doing that conclusion. <laughs> Junk. Some are though, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> I mean no, but like with like a top handle and everything. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I have no idea, no idea. But as a five-year-old, I was telling my friends on the playground that that's what it looks like. <laughs> well, listen, in my house, it's called the Thunderdome. Oh. <laughs> I didn't make that up. That's yeah, from, AC, AC, that's no, I was telling her ACDC Thunder. That's what I'm thinking, gonna think about. Well, um, it's for my tree. son, and he, that's his favorite band. So <laughs> you know. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a Thunderdome. I heard Russell the disco. Hmm? Heard men call it Russell the love muscle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. I don't know. I've never heard of that one. <laughs> like, I <don't> know. <laughs> Russell the love muscle. <laughs> Named it. I've never been with, but I've had friends that talk about like how their boyfriends are, you know, <laughs> give it a name. My, my oh son my at his age is really funny, and I probably shouldn't condone these words coming out of his mouth, but they're too funny not to like laugh. I, I have to like do one of these. Like, um, he so we have a male and a female dog, and he's like, Oh, hi, numb nuts, and hi, no nuts. <laughs> he that's his nicknames for them now, and then he goes, Oh, it's it's um, Mickey with the tiny, tiny little beanie pecker, whatever he calls him, like. Because he has no nuts anymore. Like, he just, like, has nothing there. Then he calls it a meat scab. A meat scab? Oh, my God. Oh, God. It's gross. A meat scab. Because it's so gross. little. Yeah, no, it's so... A dog... Well, a good thing, like, Ravi, it doesn't have that problem that much. He's not, like, a humper. Like, he's not one of those problems. Like, he, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Don't make me throw the water out sometimes. on my phone again. <laughs> I, I, he's, he's not one of those dogs. I'm so grateful he doesn't do that, because that's quite embarrassing. But, um... When we when he was rescued, kind of knew how old he was, but not super new. So we waited for the um, neutering. His balls got so freaking big. I was like, well, I had a picture of him somewhere. Like I took a picture of it. Of course I did. I was like, this is like bouncy balls. Like remember those bouncy balls you bounce on as a kid in like gym class? That's what they look like. They, they, were, they were so big. And I was like, but I, you know, growing up, my dad's a vet, so our dogs were like neutered right away, and so I never really saw. And, you know, in India, you see them on the streets, obviously. But I was like, holy shit, those things are like freaking bean bags. Like, they, and it's like, <laughs> like short hair. So it's like, you can see his belly button. Like, he has no hair on his chest. So you can see his belly button. I've never seen a dog's belly button except for with Robbie. And um, yeah, and those suckers, like, when he got him taken off, it, I kind of missed him. I was like, those things were like, they were fun. Like, if it was soft and cushy. Like, like, you know, I, I'll have to a find stress, a stress ball, a cup of balls, an ace of cups. So with I, was, I was like so fascinated with how big they were because I just had never. I mean, <laughs> of course you were, Bryce. We, wait, we waited because we didn't know for sure how old he was. We want to make sure he was for sure old enough to go through that surgery. And um, I was like, I mean, I was like an eight year old. I was like, what are these? Like this. This winter? <laughs> You just remind me, so, sorry, I cut you off, but this winter, I saw a basset hound running around in the snow, and it's a, it was a little puppy, but he grew, and he grew, and he grew, and the little basset hound, you know, his ears, everything droops on a basset. These suckers were so long, <laughs> and so when he was running through the snow, he left a ball trail. <laughs> <laughs> And then he, and then he was you and his oh balls were like purple. They were like purple. Oh so I'll tell you something too. This is like a little bit personal, but 
I'm just going to say it. So in the Mysore room, there's a posture that people do where they have to sit on their heel and fold over. And I've never as a teacher ever been comfortable adjusting men in that posture because they're literally sitting on their heel. And I feel, I don't like, I'm like, where does it go? Like, I don't understand how your heel is there and that's there too. Like, so I just don't, I like, I'll verbally talk to them, but like, I will work with women, but like men, I'm like, I'm scared. I'm going to like, you're not going to be able to have children if I adjust you. Like, that's how, I, that's how <laughs> I am actually adjusting. You're going to deflate it? Like, I, I'm like, is it going to pop? Oh my God. Like, oh, like a balloon? Like, I don't, I mean, I'm like, I don't understand how this is working because your heel, like, you're sitting on your heel and it's like in the perineum and like all that's there too. Oh my God. So oh my I don't gosh. know, like, I, I'm just, I'm very sensitive that I'm going to mess up someone's lineage. <laughs> oh my God. I, try I mean, to- in high school, they used to call it the family jewels. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they used to okay. call it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, let's take it from there. Is <laughs> Magdalene going to be like back after that? That's Mary Magdalene now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, there, hmm, how do I word this? I should have been focusing on reading my cards rather than talking about dog balls, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, I feel like right now they're not content enough to come back yet. Their souls are just not ready with, uh, the four of cups. Oh, shit. I just dropped another card. See, I'm excited. Okay. Here it's active. Um, Here it's active. I think after the, uh, the money, the Nisera, Jacera stuff and everything like that, and it's going to be distributed around the world. So then after that, uh, Oh, that would be them. So, so I'm, I'm not hearing, getting that from here. I'm hearing that Nasera might take about seven years to ro- fully roll out. Honestly, I kind of agree yeah. with that because I think if you handed everybody all this money, they'd go berserk. Yeah. With it. They wouldn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I just, there's stuff we're not going to know right now. Even, I mean, even Charlie Ward has alluded to that. <laughs> he keeps saying they're not in any hurry. Like no, and we have to, new so, the old system has to be crashed. And as annoying as that yeah. is, with like all the prices right now, which are astron, I am so glad I work from home. Like I'm so freaking glad I work from home right now. Um, yeah, they're yeah. astronomical. Like this has to happen. Like it literally has to happen in order for us to like bury the old system. You know, it has to literally be on life support. <laughs> you know, so Quite honestly, like. I had that thought today. I actually posted a video on my TikTok about it. I was like, I feel like this is literally like a, a marker of I've grown because I'm like, I don't really want anyone to just give me a million dollars. I'm like having fun finding ways to make money and like, you know, support myself and like get like generational wealth, like without depending on anyone else. Like it's actually like a good challenge for me. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, I like the like small or like the growth that continues to happen to where like, you know, I get more and more money like every year. Like that's kind of been a thing since me and my husband have been married. And it's been nice because we've been able to like deal with the increase in a mature like way. Yeah. And I just don't feel like that would happen if, you know, like you said, like you just give people a ton of money and then they're like Woo, we have to realize I mean, this is something you study in all spiritual paths and i and i've said this before over my whole adult life i've become over the course of the last well, let's say like 15 years we'll say i have become a minimalist i don't need a whole i don't want a whole life i like living in a small place i like having very little clothes, like very minimal clothes. Like I'm a minimalist, but that happens. It's very common for that to happen for people on a spiritual path because you learn that buying things, having things is not what fulfills you, right? You have to fulfill yourself. And so a lot of people go through that. And um, I mean, the things I have the most of are probably books, you know, and, um, and actually I get overwhelmed if I have too, too much clothes hanging in the closet. I get overwhelmed by that. And so I think that we all have to go through Some of us have already gone through it, but as humanity, as a collective, we all have to go through that understanding of who we really are because the matrix system had us keeping up with the Joneses, right? In the ego, in the low density of like identifying with the self, the false sense of self versus the security of the soul. And so we have to kind of go through that, I think, so that when we are given that power, collectively, we understand that that doesn't define who we are. 
And so therefore we're not in the need to like purchase private planes and all that kind of, I don't want a private yeah. plane. You know, like, you know, it's like, I don't need that. Like, I, I don't, I don't want a big house. Like I want a, a house big enough to house my family. I don't want a house so big where if I have children, I don't see them all day because they're in the other wing, you know, like I, I want to, I want a home. I want, um, I don't need, I don't, I've never cared about cars. Like I've never, I've always driven my car until it can't drive anymore. Like I've I'm never cared with that. The car. Yeah. I'm like happy, like, cause you know, I, I am planning on moving South. Um, and so I, everybody's like, are you going to miss your house? Or, you know, what are you going, where are you going to move? I'm like, listen, I have a bunch of camping equipment. I'll just stick all that shit in my car, grab me some marshmallows and stuff to cook with and everything, plant my ass on the beach next to my damn palm tree. And I'm going to be a very happy person. I don't need a lot. I do need a place to shower. Yeah. I need a bathtub because I like taking Yeah. I need a shower. Like, because I'm very, you know, retentive about my hygiene. But other than that, put me on a beach and I'm, I'm great. I'll survive that. I'm good. Same. Same. Yeah. All right, ladies. We're a little bit, we've, this has been a long episode, but I've had so much fun. <laughs> you know, this this again. Really great. We should do this again. How about I say to the, the viewers, our friends that are watching right now, um, since we're not going to be reading on actual people, because that goes against the, the law of free will, we'll, we'll read on ourselves if we have questions. But um, if you have any like mystical questions or like questions about timeline stuff, um, ask us in the comment section below and maybe next time we can kind of go through your ideas because I have my favorite questions to answer. Same. Like half of this episode, it's literally been me like, okay, what about <clears throat> this? What about that? Because we don't know for sure. We have no idea for sure because we haven't, we, there's no a access to any information that I have that you guys don't have either. Like we are literally just trying to use critical thinking skills and trying to figure out like what the truth is. And so if this yeah. got your wheels turning, let us know any like, mystical crust questions you have and next time we'll look into that too so all right ladies thank you so much this is always so much fun i always feel like we're 12 year olds at a sleepover um, it's so, true. <laughs> so true we're popping up keeps popping up keeps popping. i think i'm gonna make some shirts the are world able. the world it's gonna cover the world <laughs> oh my oh, god, god. Well, you know, that's why they call it Mother Earth and Father Sky is because what happens when it rains? It's some baby gravy hitting that Mother Earth. That's the truth. Oh, oh my goodness. I Thank will you, never Jordan Maxwell. Oh my Look, that's from Jordan Maxwell. Yo, Jordan Maxwell's like one of the OG researchers. <laughs> it's Mother Earth and Father Sky because the rain is the baby gravy that hits the earth. I'm serious. Like, that's not from me. That's from Jordan Maxwell. How have you ruined rain for me? <laughs> like, now when he said that, I was like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> I'm crying. Oh, you. Is Father is Sky a succumbed Mother Earth. I'm crying. <laughs> No, oh my god. What is it going to turn white? They had like a romantic oh god. Father Sky and Mother Earth. Like, you know, this they talked so about the plants and the face of cops came around. <laughs> humanity, like we got plants. We got, I mean, that's literally what happened. And so whenever it rains, oh, the ancient man. civilizations would be like excited because that meant fertility. Like that meant that. Oh my goodness. That explains why plants grow because of the rainwater. Okay. It's now really we, now we have the, the science. Hokey -pokey. It now is. We have so the science. Man. Yeah. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around like this. That's what it's all about. Now you are you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about, right? That's what oh my lord! So many things ruined in the matter of five that minutes. What, what Jordan, in the world? That is what yo. I did not come up with that. That was a Jordan Maxwell thing when he taught it. He said it. I don't even think it's what you said. I think it's how you said it. I mean, he probably said a lot. <laughs> I said it, but when he when I was watching his lecture, I was like, oh yeah, oh, that makes sense. It totally makes sense. <laughs> so, oh my god! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! All right, ladies, I love you guys so much, and I love I all love of you so so much. so much. And we will definitely be back. <laughs> Let us know down in the comment sections your haha -ha moments, and uh, laugh with us, and have fun with us, and any questions you have <laughs> regarding the mystical. Um, well, I'm a baby gravy. You're baby gravy. I think all of our viewers know a baby gravy. Oh my goodness. 
I know it smells weird. Well, maybe not Levi. <laughs> it was made with that too. Sorry. <laughs> no, man. Jacob. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but I'm like, you know, we're on a roll right now, so. She can't, she can't hear it. <laughs> hey, sweet boy. <gasps> he sees your, he sees your, um, your palm tree. <laughs> You want one of those I let him play with the water hose. <laughs> so he's wet. Oh, fun. Yeah. I want to play. I want to slip and slide. Levi, can we come yeah. up here and slip and slide with give you? Me, he says, give me, give me. <laughs> hey, I, I would say we could go to White a couple White. years ago and my boots got in the way. I would say we could go to Whitewater, but that place kind of gross. So we'll just go in someone's backyard. <laughs> All right, ladies, okay. I love you guys so much. Levi, Auntie Bryce loves you so much. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye. Bye.